There are some certainties in life that no matter how hard you try, you'll never escape. Death is one of them. How many of you have thought about dying? Ah, uh, not really. You gotta live your life, right? Mm, no, not often. Once in a while. Something that becomes more uh, in your face as you get older. Um, more recently, just because of family issues, but um, just have to enjoy each day to the fullest. So. So if so many people die, why don't we talk about it? Well, maybe like any difficult subject matter, we're just too afraid. Or maybe it's because we just don't understand what happens once we die, if anything at all. We do not know what it's like to live without having a body. And we do not know for sure what is beyond what's on the other side of the Jordan River. And unknownness creates more fear for us than anything else. But while most of us fear the inevitable, the ancient Egyptians anticipated it, seeing death as a ticket to the exquisite afterlife, even filling tombs and writings with personal belongings to take on the journey. So when did death become so dreaded? And why do those who even deal with it every day find it challenging? Some deaths are quite peaceful. Other deaths are quite horrific. He was uh, pinned into the vehicle, uh, legs were still in, his one foot was gone. Uh, he was pretty much split open from the shoulder down to the middle of the back. It was a little overwhelming, especially being my first. There was absolutely nothing that, that could be done. He was obviously dead. A young boy, 13 years old, uh, committed suicide. He hung himself on his bedroom door after having an argument with his mother. And my partner and I were the first people to arrive. When we got there, they had obviously taken him off the door. Now, unfortunately, that boy was too far gone, and we weren't able to revive him. 911 emergency. But while most of us avoid the dreaded D word, there are some places where death is just a fact of life. The residents at Shepherd Village know that this could be their final destination, in this world anyway. And that could be why they're looking forward to what comes next. I'm not afraid of dying. I'm just afraid it won't happen soon enough. I'm 92. I do not want to live forever. <laughs> And I would look forward to dying. I'm not afraid of it. Well, the thing is, I'm closer to it than anybody here. I'm ready when the call comes. I'm prepared because I love Jesus. And Jesus said he's going to prepare a place for us. But this happens to be the final place many visit here on Earth. And while close to a quarter of a million Canadians died last year, the hospital, not the seniors' home, is usually the final stop for many. Death is the one thing that's a common denominator. Everybody's going to go through it. Cardiologist Dr. Maurice Rawlings has stared into the face of death many times and says it isn't always what you expect. Death itself is nothing. That's just sudden cessation of breathing and heartbeat. The moment of death, the transition, is nothing to fear. And Gary Payne would agree. He ministers to the dying every day. Really my primary role is to be with people in their questions, to be with people in their challenges, uh, to be with people as they're grieving, and not to take that away from them. As he travels from patient to patient, ministering through that grief, every once in a while he experiences an encounter with death that no one can explain without using the word peaceful. I remember one woman dying of cancer. This is the only time this happened in 15 years. Uh, a woman, uh, right before she died, right before she took her last breath, she sat up in bed and said, oh, isn't that beautiful? And then she laid down and she died. And while death is deeply personal, the response to it often depends on what you've seen. 
isolation and uh, misunderstanding. I think it just signifies the moment where you pass from this life to the next um, and depending on where you stand with God uh, that can either be a good or bad thing. That is very surreal. Like in one in, in one moment they're talking and they're and they're coughing and you know they're they're struggling for air and the next moment they're not and it's it's something that you can't really explain. And That's where Rick steps in. It's a pretty interesting job that you have. It certainly is. You you meet people at uh, a crisis time in their life um, and uh, walk them through some difficult days. And death is often in the details and can often be overwhelming. There are caskets to pick, plots to choose, eulogies to write. The list can be long and daunting. Rick Ludwig's role is to prepare the deceased for the family's final goodbye. So this is the closed door area of the uh, funeral home, but uh, it's an important area of the funeral mm -hmm. home because this is where the uh, funeral director um, uses his talents and abilities to create an opportunity for people to have a final goodbye. And while chemicals and makeup may help prepare the physical body for its last viewing, Rick says it also brings a sense of peace to the family soul during a very difficult situation. If you stand at the grave regularly with people, it really helps you sort out what's important in life and what isn't. And for a lot of us, once that casket closes, so does the conversation, even if the questions still remain. Heaven, hell, purgatory, where do we go from here? Join us tomorrow for a little piece of heaven. I knew I would live forever, but God's going to love me forever. He's going to take care of me forever. It's impossible to think anything negative. Mm -hmm.